protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. Have you ever been stranded on the side of a motorway with a broken down car? Like me, is that something that worries you? That's where Motor Breakdown Insurance comes in. If your vehicle breaks down, a trained professional will be sent out to get you back on the road. Or if this is not possible within the specified time frame to transport you to your home or to the nearest garage. Boxing King Media in association with SaveMoreMoney.com and the rehab season. Uh, Adam, Azim, Adam, it's been a while. Um, we're literally, what, 24 hours away from uh, you stepping into the ring, um, aiming to become a European champion at such a young age. Yeah, it's you know it's a it's an it's an incredible moment for me and my family as well. You know, if, if I do win it tomorrow, inshallah, which which I am, I'm, I'm not going into that ring. Obviously, coming back with nothing, I'm there to take it with both hands. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. You know, inshallah, I wanna obviously put on a great uh, display, and uh, you know, I'm here in uh, ribeye, you know, having you know having my uh, my munch for the for the fight tomorrow. So. Got a shout at Ribeye, uh, Ribeye Steakhouse. I think it's the second branch they've got. The yeah. one in Manchester, one in Birmingham. This is a big, big plug. This is well. I'm not getting anything out of this other than a free steak. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been to a steak place many, uh, many times. Aim and obviously supply me for the, for the, to get me ready for the fight tomorrow as well. So even they have one in Manchester. It's brilliant as well. So uh, whoever wants to come here, you know, it's an amazing place. Such great people. And the steak is unbelievable. So you know, if you if you guys want your taste buds to be good, come to this place. Yeah, I'm sure they can make out from the back backdrop. It's a, a really really nice building, and a lot of money's gone into the deco. Uh, one in Manchester, one in Birmingham. So just want to uh, obviously not caught up with you for quite a while. Uh, your opponent, a bit shorter than you, a southpaw, um, a different challenge, completely different from what you faced last time. Well, what's the biggest thing you learned from last time that you're looking to take into this fight? Well, you know, Fanyan was, uh, he was obviously a very experienced opponent, you know, he's only lost one fight at 25. Uh, Fanyan was very technical, very, very strong as well, so um, what I've learned into that fight is that also my camp as well. I've, I've done so many things different in this camp than what I did in that last camp. Uh, but now I know what, I, I, what mistakes I've done wrong in that fight. When you look at it, it was more of an education uh, fight uh, for me, but you know, for this fight, I feel like Fanyan, not Fanyan, uh, Frank Petterjan is going to give me more opportunities for me to, you know, plant my feet and, uh, you know, hit him with a lot of shots as well. So the one thing about Frank Petterjan, he's going to come walking into my shots, which I love. I love people who come at me. So, um, you know, he tried to give it to me at the press conference, but he ain't going to do nothing. So. I saw you trying to give it to him at the weigh-in today as well. You know, what were you whispering to him? I've never really seen that side of you before. Do you know what he said to me? I, I'm the champion. I'm this and that. He tried giving me some aggressive look. He's the guy who's on the stage. Was it having three, three water bottles, electrolytes straight out because he's you know dry at the weight. So, um, so. But the other thing was, I told him that you know, I said that you're so dry that when I hit a body shot, you're going to be going down. So that's what I said to him. So. Good stuff, man. I don't even want to talk about what's what's ahead because I know you've been name dropping Tiafima Lopez, Javante Davis, but that is the ultimate dream. But what I will say is, you know, having seen what the what's been going on in London this week with all the heavyweight fights, uh, do you think Ben Shalom could maybe get you some sort of crazy fight in Saudi somewhere way down the line? You never you never know. Would you would you like that opportunity? To be honest, it'd be amazing to fight in the Saudi. You know, it's a, it's a great country to fight in. It's obviously a Muslim environment as well, Islamic environment where also the Kaaba is as well so I really want to go there to do Umrah and stuff like that but also it's just the environment there as well it's, it's a different scene that I've not marketed yet and I feel like you know my next target should be Saudi because you know it'd be nice you know to go out there with my team and enjoy it there as well and hopefully you know it'd be nice to take a Tia Fimo or Ryan Garcia into Saudi one day so Good stuff, man. A any final words from you? I know last time round it was a bit of an emotional fight for you as well because I know because your granddad passed away close to the fight. Um, anything you want to add about this this moment tomorrow? Um, to be honest, this fight is dedicated to my baby sister, <laughs> uh, Oksa Azim, her name is, uh, but also dedicated to my mum as well because she can't come to the fight as well. Uh, she's there, you know, looking up, look after the baby, 
uh, also her birthday's coming up, so you know, it's her present, so like I did for the Charlton fight, so they ain't no mess up this time. Adam Azim, as always, appreciate your time. Um, thank you. Thank you.